Praise God. All right, tonight we're going to be in Psalm 27. Psalm 27 is, uh, you know, you've probably heard me say this a number of times, but my favorite scriptures in the Bible are the ones that I'm studying and teaching at the moment. That's my favorite verse. But uh, I keep coming back to Psalm 27 over and over again. And I know that there have been some folks that have had some hard times lately. And uh, some folks in my own family with some hard times lately. And uh, I went to Psalm 27 uh, because it just encourages and, and, and lifts us up so much. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is just read the whole Psalm, 14 verses. And this will probably be the best teaching you'll ever get tonight is me just reading these verses. So just enjoy them and let them wash over your heart and let them wash over your soul. And so, Father, again, we're before you. We thank you for loving us, Lord. Um, we'd like to receive from your word tonight. So light it up in our hearts. We ask this in Jesus' name. Everybody says, Amen. Amen. Psalm 27, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. Though an army may encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me he shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head is lifted above my enemies all around. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, Lord, I will seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not leave me nor forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and mother forsake me, then the Lord will take care of me. Teach me your ways, O Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. Do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and such as breathe out violence. I would have lost heart unless... I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen? Amen. That's just, I'll tell you, mark that in your Bible. It's one of those go-to uh, psalms in the scriptures. The Psalms are, the, are the, the record of the words of David's, David wrote more than half of them. The book of Psalms is the biggest book in the Bible. It sits in the middle of the Bible. It's a hymnal is what it is. It's the Jewish hymnal. So really you can look at the book of Psalms and say here's 150 of the greatest hits of the Bible. These are definitely oldies but goodies. And so the one that we're looking at here was written probably 3,000 years ago. And I think to myself, I wonder how many saints could be seen down through the centuries by the Lord 
reading these very verses. Particularly when you think of when they were written. These were written by David and many scholars believe that at the time he wrote this he was hiding out in the caves because Saul was chasing him trying to kill him. So can you imagine that? David scribbling out this song, plucking out the chords on whatever kind of instrument he played there, and then coming up with this. And he must have been a young man, probably in his 20s, maybe 30 years old. Imagine that, just a young whippersnapper. But God filled him with his Holy Spirit. And so you can have great hope for the younger folks that you know. Because the things that God does through our lives are not dependent upon us, but dependent upon him. And what God looks for is a servant that's willing to lay down their own heart and lay down their own rights and willing to do and to be and to say what it is that he calls upon us to do. Knowing that whatever it is that God calls upon us to do, he'll also give us the strength to do it. I heard somebody the other day was counseling somebody and was saying, well, a lot of crazy things, but one of the things that they said was, oh, you're just trying to please everybody. And I thought to myself, you know what? The best counsel that you can give somebody, there is somebody you want to please, and it's the Lord. Live your life to please the Lord. Everything else falls into line after that. So let's just walk through this. I just thought we would just walk through it and talk about it and see how the Lord might speak to our hearts. A Psalm of David. I, I think you're going to see a particular word stick out here. I'm going to accent it. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? There has to come a point in each one of our walks where God becomes very personal and very close to each one of us. So that you're not pulling upon what you think somebody else's God is. The pastor or the church or your folks or some relative that has a close walk with the Lord. No, no, no. You need to come to know the Lord in such a manner in which you will say, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Interesting thing about calling the Lord his light here, that this is the first time where actually the Lord is referred to as light. He doesn't say the Lord lights things for me. No, he's saying the Lord in person, his person is my light. This is the first time in the scriptures where it gives God. There are other places in the scriptures where it talks about God in reference to light, but this is the first time he's actually called light. And as we've been studying through the Gospel of John, we find out that John even says Jesus is light. Later on in the Gospel of, of John, Jesus is quoted as, say, quoted as saying, I am the light of the world. Imagine that, having the light with you at all times. You ever been in a situation where you needed a light? You know what's really great about the cell phones today? <laughs> You've got light right away. And so that's pretty nifty. Uh, you can ask my wife, I've got this affinity for flashlights. I don't know why, but she puts flashlights in my stocking stuffer at Christmas and she gives me a, a, a new flashlight and does something else. I, I, I don't know why. <laughs> just the big kid in me, but to actually say that God is your light. And I think the intended inference here is that with God, with me, in me, my relationship with him, I see things through a different light. In fact, don't we say that sometimes? I'm seeing things in a new light. I'm seeing you in a new light. I'm seeing life in a new light. And the new light is God himself who's with us. And when that light is with you, it dispels the darkness. And so why should I be afraid when the Lord is with me? Isn't it kind of neat to think of Jesus as your big brother? A big brother who can take on anybody. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Now, I personally don't think that David was talking about salvation in the way that we think of salvation. 
I think David was saying, as he's on the run, you're going to save me. You're my salvation from the troubles that are chasing me. And I think that that also is true in our lives as well. But it's also beautiful to think of the Lord that he is salvation. In fact, that's his name, Jesus. The Lord is salvation. That's his name. It says, when, wicked, when the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my enemies and foes, they stumbled and fell. I think the contrast there is if we've spent any time on our own, doing our own thing, trying to be something or accomplish something on our own, a lot of times we end up stumbling and falling, don't we? <laughs> I don't think there's a Christian alive who says that they have not stumbled unless they just got saved two minutes ago. But uh, we all stumble, don't we, in many things. But he's saying here, if I walk and live in the recognition that God is my light, he is my salvation, he is the strength of my life, then it's not me who's going to stumble, it's the enemy around us. David specifically speaking of Saul and his enemies <laughs> as his enemy. But don't we have an enemy as well? I tell you, the enemy would just love to take you out. And not just you alone would love to take your family out and your pets and whatever else that he can get his hands on. How important then is it for us to all the more cling to the Lord as our light and our strength? It says, he even carries it a step further. He goes, even if there was an army encamped against me, which there was, <laughs> my heart shall not fear. The war should rise against me. In this I will be confident. The Christian, the believer in Christ, by nearness and dearness to the Lord, can come into a place of confidence regardless of whatever else is going on in their lives. I don't have a job, but I am confident in this, that God said he would take care of my needs. I was in an accident, but I'm confident of this, that God is there as my helper and my strength. Whatever may happen, you can have a confidence that goes along with you. Uh, somebody called me last week and they were having a difficulty uh, in their job. And uh, as we talked, uh, uh, this person referred to the sermon that I talked about, thanking God before you get an answer. And uh, the prayer request of this person was, can we pray right now? And I want to thank God for the answer that's coming. I thought, wow, that's beautiful. You ever done that one? I'm in big trouble, but I'm going to thank God for what's coming, his answer to that, because it's going to be for my highest and best good. So David is saying, even if there was an army around me of the enemy, I still have this confidence of who God is and that I walk with him. Then he says, one thing I have desired. Isn't it interesting if we maybe went around the room and said, what's the one thing that you'd really like to have right now? What's the one thing that you really want? Or if we walked out and did a man on the street. Excuse me, I'm the man on the street. I'd like to ask you a question. What's the one thing you desire in life? Boy, you'd get a lot of crazy answers, wouldn't you? We might even think it sometimes to ourselves. Lord, if you, if you just, you know, let me win the lotto. Now, I know I don't play the lotto, but maybe if, if, if there was a winning ticket and it was just flying through the air and it just kind of landed in my hand, <laughs> maybe you could do that one, Lord. <laughs> or whatever the case may be, you know, we think of different things. But here, this uh, kid on the run with an army after him, and I call him a kid because he's a kid. He's much younger than me. And so he says, there's one thing, some people think that he was in the cave of Adullam. Okay, so let's picture it. it. It's nighttime, it's cold, but unless the cave goes way back, they're not going to light a fire, right? Because the enemy will know right where they're at. So it's nighttime, it's in the desert, it gets cold in the desert. Maybe he's looking out and watching. He's hearing the, the sounds of the crickets at night and the wolves howling. I would say, Lord, one thing I desire, 
an Uber driver to get me out of here. <laughs> but David says, in the midst of this, Lord, one thing I have desired of the Lord, that I will seek. Let, let me stop there also. Uh, he's going to say something that he desires of the Lord. If I did ask you, what do you desire of the Lord? You might think of something really good to say. I don't know. You know. Lord, help me get over my fears. Lord, help me not be anxious. Lord, uh, give me confidence that you hear my prayers. Whatever it may be, you may say something like that. I think that we all have desires of the Lord. But the interesting thing about David is not only does he have a desire of the Lord, but he puts feet to his desire. Do you see that? He says, one thing I desire, that I will seek. I desire something of the Lord, and I'm going to go after it. I'm going to seek this from God. I'm going to continually go after the Lord. I'm going to ask. Who said to ask, seek, and knock? Who was that again that said that? Oh, yeah, that was Jesus who said that. Ask, seek, knock, because you're going to get an answer, he said. That's beautiful. So David is saying here, one thing I've desired of the Lord, I'm going to seek after it. And then he says this that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. I've come to understand that the word house that's used here is not necessarily speaking of the tabernacle or the temple. This is like, this is like saying to God, I want to live in your house. Can I move in wherever you're at, Lord? That would be the greatest thing in all my life would be to move in with you is that something that he wants to be like that tells me he wants to be family he wants nearness he wants to be able to look and see god and know that he's there gosh i just think that's beautiful and then he goes on to say all the days of my life well by the way how long is a believer's life <laughs> that's that's eternity isn't it <laughs> so I'm going to stretch this out of what David's saying, uh, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And then he says, to behold his beauty. The word behold there, I went ahead and checked out that word behold. And the idea of the word behold here is to gaze intently. Lord, I, I want to find you. I want to live with you. And then I just want to gaze at you i want to pull my put all my focus i just look at the beauty of the lord that's his thinking here i want that same thinking to behold the beauty of the lord and to inquire in his temple the word inquire here not only carries with it the idea of asking questions we all probably have a list of things that we would like to know for sure from the lord or know about I don't know if you have that kind of a thing, but in my mind, I have a little index file. Anybody know what an index file is? Yeah, that was pre-computers. Uh, <laughs> I have a Rolodex. Anybody know what a Rolodex is? I said that one time when I was teaching the youth, and uh, one of the kids raised their hand and said, what's a Rolodex? <laughs> okay. <laughs> they have them in the Smithsonian now. Anyway, uh, I have a card file in my head. And I have certain things that I'm waiting on additional information. <laughs> How does this work, Lord? Not quite sure. I just write it down, put it in the file card, waiting for additional information. So uh, he is saying he wants to inquire in his temple. Keith, the word inquire here is more like, in my thinking, to ponder. I want to live with you. I want to gaze at your beauty. And there are things, in, things about you and about creation and about life and the eternity, the eternal. I just want to, I want to be able to ponder these things with you. I want, Lord, can we just like think about these things together, eternity, and how you work this all out and your great mystery of of your mercy and your grace and your love for me. Lord, I want to I want to ponder these things with you. For in the time of trouble, 
Anybody here currently in a time of trouble? <laughs> they come and they go, don't they, those times of trouble? One of my dad's sayings was through the years, this too shall pass. <laughs> Ever heard that one? Now I'm starting to say it. <laughs> this too shall pass. In the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. The idea of a pavilion here is the idea of a secure facility. <laughs> I'll be secure there. God's got me under wraps, so to speak. In the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret place. See, I, I saw that secret place and I thought to myself, we each need to find that secret place between us and the Lord. Now, what am I talking about? I sincerely believe that there are places within our hearts, there are places within our thoughts that nobody else can go to. There may be things that you've thought of or things that you've experienced or things that you have deep worries or troubles or anxieties about. And though you may tell somebody about your situation or about what you went through, you know that there's nobody else who can really know what you're experiencing or what you're feeling at that moment. So when it says secret place to me in regards to the Lord, that he's going to put me in the secret place, I know that there are places within my heart that only I can go to and only the Lord can go there. That even when I go to those deep thoughts or those worries or the troubles or concerns that I've had, I know that he's there. I know that he's that, you know, soft place to land, you know, that we call our homes. He's that soft place to land. In the secret place of his tabernacle, he shall hide me. He shall set me high upon a rock. Well, I'd like to ask you who that rock might be. You think that's Jesus? I surely think that's Jesus. He'll set my feet upon a rock. Now, a nice thing about rock <laughs> is that it doesn't move. <laughs> it's steady, it's firm, it's unchanging. Now, even though the rock doesn't move, guess who does? I do. I think sometimes I look like jello, but I'm standing on the rock. <laughs> and that's what you need to know. It's firm, it doesn't change. You can trust the rock that you're set upon. Now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. I, I uh, recently heard, uh, you know, have you just been watching all these candidates? Like, this is craziness right now, isn't it? I mean, I've never seen anything like this in all my born days, you know. And uh, I'm looking at this thinking, <laughs> this is craziness. Uh, the things that they're saying. But I, I have to share this with you because... It's just uh, really, really cool. So this uh, recent uh, Democratic candidate was just ripping on the vice president. I don't know if anybody saw this. But he was just ripping on the VP, Pence, you know? Such, such a nice guy, too. But he was saying all kinds of horrible things about him. And then they asked Mike Pence what he thought about this guy. Interesting, huh? You know what he said? He said, I've always had a very good working relationship with him. I think he's honorable in the things that he wants to do and how he wants to represent his people. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Lord bless that guy. Talk about somebody who can rise above, you know, the pettiness of things. I was just totally impressed. I didn't expect that. I thought, okay, here we go. He is going to fight back and say that guy was lying and that's not true. And He didn't do any of that. He, that, was turning the other cheek. that was turning the other cheek and also allowing God to be his defense. I just was, I was extremely impressed by that, I have to say. So, uh, and now my head is lifted above my enemies all around me. See, I took that after hearing that to think to myself, I don't play the same game. I don't play by the same rules. I don't respond or act the same way. I heard somebody saying that, uh, where was that? 
recently somebody was saying how they spent a lot of a lot of years yelling at other drivers <laughs> but that i think it was at a friday night bible study somebody was a, was talking about this but that that god had ministered to their heart and that now they pray for whoever it is oh father that guy that just cut me off please protect him from himself protect him from others and lord uh, bring him to uh, a knowledge of your salvation. I thought, wow, that is so cool. That's rising above. So thank you, Lord, for that. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing. Yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. I want you to recognize that it appears to me that David is making a conscious decision in how he's going to live. So David's saying, this is what I'm going to do. There may be an enemy out there. There may be adversaries out there. They may be after me. I may be in a fix in a cave with somebody chasing me. It may look grim, but I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a choice here. And my choice here right now is to sing praises to the Lord. And that's what this is. This psalm is actually a song of joy and a song of praises to the Lord. Somebody else that I had talked to one time uh, said to me, uh, they were in a fix and uh, it looked like something was going to happen that was going to be very, very expensive. And uh, this brother said to me, you know what? At first I was really going to blow a gasket and then I thought to myself, if I blow a gasket, it's only going to hurt me. So why don't I just be joyful and say, thank you, Lord, for whatever it is you're going to do. And I thought, that's right on. That's the ticket right there. It looks grim. I don't have any answers. I'm struggling. But I'm going to sing praises to the Lord. Now, starting in verse 7, I think it like, turns into this wonderful, uh, very personal prayer. I don't know if you've ever thought of... Uh, sharing your prayers with other people it seems to me that that's something that we do here a lot you know mike you lead people in prayer all the time mike sends out prayers on the email prayer chain and we just list the prayer right there well david is doing that same kind of a thing uh i don't know if you've done this uh but somebody sends you a text and they say well this happened and that send them back a prayer as you respond to them, say, oh, wow, that that's, must be difficult. Uh, let's pray. And then just text in your prayer right there. Oh, Lord, you know, help my brother, help my sister. Be with us in this difficult time. Back and forth. Really, it's a good thing to do. So here's the prayer right here. He starts out with, hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice have mercy also upon me and answer me i think that what happens here in verse 7 is something that's important to all of us in time of prayer and that is he takes a very humble position there's no demand here it's a request and it's a humble request and so there needs to be for each one of us that continual recognition of who i am and who he is and when I get that picture of who I am standing before who he is, then I need to say, hear me, O Lord, when I cry out to you. Crying out to me tells me that there's some intensity in his prayer. And sometimes we can fail to have that. Not that we're shouting or anything like that. But it's not just a, oh yeah, God, if you could help me, that'd be great. And then on you go. It's like, no, Lord... <laughs> This is really something that's on me. And, and I'm right here, and I'm before you, and I'm coming to you first, and I'm not after anybody else. It's you and me, Lord, and, and hear me when I cry out to you. It's that kind of a thing. And then he says, have mercy also upon me and answer me. So, Lord, don't just hear me as I humbly come before you with my tears, but I would like for you to respond to me in mercy and with an answer why do we want god to respond to us in mercy 
This is very simple. Does anybody here want what they deserve from God? <laughs> Do you want what you've earned? You're going to get it. <laughs> so instead of God, you better, or God, this isn't fair, or you know what I mean? Sometimes you've heard those prayers. I get nervous when I hear those prayers. So when he prays like that, I want to scoot over, you know? <laughs> Don't want to be in the line of the blast of... Uh... <laughs> so he asks for mercy. Mercy means just that. God, do not give me what I actually deserve. That's what that says. And then answer me. And then it seems as though he's giving us insight as to when he did that. Look at verse 8. When you said... So he heard something from God or something clicked in his heart or something clicked in his mind. And he says, this is what I received from God. God said to me, seek my face. So it would be like somebody just saying, you catching up with somebody. Can I talk to you? And the person looks at you and says, get over here. <laughs> Don't stand so far away. Get over here. Come here. Seek my, Come here. Be with me. Kind of a thing. So he received something in his heart. Seek my face. I had a response to God. And my response to God was, Your face, Lord, I will seek. Now let's stop there for a moment. And think. Have I heard something from the Lord? If somebody were to ask, hey, what do you think God would want you to do? What do you think God wants you to do? Has God spoken to you at all? And you say, well, you know, maybe I should be, I, th I think the Lord would have me praying more for, for the wife and kids. I really do. I really think so. Or you say, uh, what do you think God wants from you? Well, I really think God wants me to have more of a servant's heart, you know. But I'll leave that to other people. <laughs> what do you think God really wants from you? Have you received anything where God's spoken to you and you said, Okay, I think the Lord wants me to do this. Okay, David not only says that he hears from God, but then again, he turns it into an action item, and he turns right around and says... Uh, you, you said, I said, my heart said to you, your face I will seek. I'm going to do it. God laid something on my heart, and I'm going to do it. I, I, I think that there's a lot of people that hear from God. I really do. I think a lot of people hear from God. But I don't know how many actually get pushed or moved or touched in their heart that God wants them to go a certain way. And instead of going that certain way, we take a nap. <laughs> or, or we do something else that we think might be more fun. Interesting, isn't it? So David says, not only did I hear from you, and not only is my desire to seek your face, but I, I, I will do it. I'm going to do it. And then look how, look how he reveals to God, I'm just a man. Well, That's what I think this says. He says, do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. Look, Lord, you, you know what a knucklehead I am. Lord, you know some of the dumb things I've done in life. Don't, don't turn me away in anger. I mean, you very well could. Nobody would fault you for turning me away in anger. I'm just a man. I got feet of clay. I say dumb things, you know. I do some dumb things. He's just like being very, very real with God here, I think. Uh, do not turn... And let me tell you something that happened to me just this last week. So, uh, last week I was thinking about... Well, you tell me if you, if you have have a similar situation sometimes I think back on the days of my youth 
And I think of the dumb things I did. So that sometimes I, when I think about my past sometimes, I think, I think of the mistakes I made, you know, more than, more than other things. I, I think back and I go, oh, don't think about it. Oh, that, that was a dumb thing. If I could go back, if I could only go back in time, you know, if I could turn back time, you know, the hands of time for a moment, I would have done that different. I, I wouldn't have done that, gone there, said that, all that kind of stuff. So I, I think I got myself in like this little routine where I would think about, you know, days gone by and then I'd go, oh, don't think about that. And I said to the Lord in my prayer time, Lord, I think I'm having a problem. <laughs> I'm thinking I'm not thinking about, you know, my past and growing up and in my life. And I, I think every time I think back, I'm just thinking of the bad stuff. Lord, I know there was some good stuff there too. <laughs> could, Lord, could you remind me of some of the good stuff? And so the last few days, and you can ask my wife, <laughs> Lord's been popping little good things, and I was like, "Oh, that was cool, Lord! Wow, thanks about thanks for reminding me about that. That was a good thing, you know." And so the Lord's been reminding me of good things, you know. So, uh, anyway, just a little clue for you there. Do not hide your face from me. Do not your, turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. How many of you know God's been your help? <laughs> Left and right, huh? and center forward and backward above and below god's been all around you do not leave me nor forsake me O god of my salvation now remember this is david's prayer and his prayer was do not leave me or forsake me O god of my salvation can i ask you what did god of our salvation say didn't he say I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we take Jesus, I mean, we take David, we jump forward 2,000 years, and here's Jesus answering that prayer directly. David's back here praying in the cave. Do not leave me nor forsake me. 2,000 years forward. Jesus says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. Isn't that beautiful? Answer to prayer. May not come in your time, but it comes. And now he is wanting to be very practical in his relationship with God, as should we all. And he says, teach me your way. I need to be taught God's way. Uh, Jeannie likes to say, uh, we have an autopilot uh, of our flesh. And the autopilot of our flesh continually turns away from God. <laughs> right? Right? Anybody ever had a, uh, a, front end a front end alignment of your car that was really bad? That whenever you took your hand off the steering wheel, it would turn one way or the other? <laughs> My dad had a 67 uh, Pontiac Bonneville that the front end was wacky on that thing. And when you, it was a neat car, yeah. Uh, uh, when you would let go of it, it would pull, you know? So. <laughs> So he didn't fix it right away. So you'd have to. <laughs> but I borrowed his car one time. I was working uh, for uh, Pacific Bell years ago, and I was working uh, uh, three to eleven kind of thing. So uh, uh, here I am in uh, downtown Anaheim at uh, working off of Lemon Street <laughs> and uh, in operator services. And I got off work at eleven and. Uh, I borrowed his car, something was wrong with mine, and I was driving his car home, and uh, it was late at night, and I'm driving down Lincoln Boulevard, and uh, and I'm like playing around with the steering, I let go, and it go, and then I pull it back, I let go, I don't know why I was doing that, I was just being silly, and uh, looked in my rearview mirror, <laughs> and there, <laughs> there's a police officer, <laughs> and I go, oh man, <laughs> so I pulled over, and he uh, rolled down, yeah, I rolled down my window, and he says, uh, you're driving a little erratic there. I said, yes, officer. He leaned way in the car. What do you think he was doing? <laughs> he was trying to see if he could smell any alcohol or anything else. And uh, uh, he goes, where are you coming from? And I said, well, I just got off work here at 
you know, the phone company I work right there, I got off at 11. He goes, well, why are you driving that way? I said, well, I got to get the steering fixed on that. And he let me go, but <laughs> I was like, <laughs> that's just funny. But that's what your flesh is like. And you can play around with your flesh and let go, and it goes off. And you play back again. It looks like you're driving your Christian walk erratically. Why are you driving like that? in your drive to the Lord? Why are you walking like that in your walk to the Lord where you let go of your flesh and then pull it back in, let it go, pull it back? Isn't that a great picture? <laughs> so David is saying, Lord, give me a front end alignment by teaching me your way. So I know my way very well. It's not worked out that good for me. <laughs> so I want to go God's way. And when I go God's way, I need him to teach me so that when I come up to intersections where I don't know in my life if I should turn right or left, I can compare, you know, my way would be to turn this way, but God, what's your way here? The Lord says, keep going straight, Paul. All right, I keep going straight, Lord. So I need him to teach me his way, O oh Lord, and lead me in a smooth path because of my enemies. You have an adversary. He's the devil. He goes around like a roaring lion seeking who, may, who he may devour. He is continually putting roadblocks and speed bumps and all kinds of things in your path. And so David is saying, teach me, I'm going to drive your way, Lord. And as I'm going your way, don't let these stumbling things come in front of me. Where else have we heard that? Isn't that kind of like in the Lord's Prayer? <laughs> Lead me not into temptation. Give me a smooth path, but lead me in the way everlasting. What's the way everlasting? It's got to be his way. So teach me your ways and lead me in a smooth path because my enemy would make me stumble, trip, divert my attention. You know what the flesh is like? Uh, years ago, I went into uh, uh, one of our uh, Sunday school classes when we had a lot of kids and uh, we had a lot of toddlers. And it was fun watching them all grow up. But uh, uh, at that time, I think they had gotten a little out of hand or the teacher was having a hard time. And there were these little toddlers running around, bumping into each other and, and just all over the place. And I was looking at them, thinking, they need to be brought into some order here, you know. And then I think the Lord spoke to me at that point and said, that's what your flesh is like. Just see something shiny and wants to run across to the other side of the room. <laughs> Sees what somebody else has and wants what they have. <laughs> Speaks up noisily when, when it should be quiet. Not comforted by the Lord. That's what our flesh is like, a toddler out of control. Uh, do not deliver me to the will of my adversaries. This is the same thing over again. Uh, don't let me be taken advantage of by the wrong things. For false witnesses have risen against me. Anybody ever had any false witnesses? rise against them you know am i the only one no okay and such as breathe out violence especially today my goodness we see this a lot it's just a graceless age and uh, whatever happened to civility you know uh, whatever happened to temperance or you know if we disagree on things, that's, that's just not the end of the world. You know, we're all different, right? <laughs> so it's just crazy to watch this. Do not deliver me to the will of my enemies, for false witnesses have risen against me, such as breathe out violence. And then he kind of comes to a halt. And he says, I would have lost heart, but I got to tell you something. The translators were trying to help us out, and they put in those words. Those are not David's words. That's the translator that put that in. If you notice in your Bibles, it's in italics. I would have lost heart. It's not there. That's the meaning, I think, and it's a pretty good shot at it. But watch this. 
false witnesses, breathe out violence, unless I had believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Uh, one translator said that that word believed might be better put as hoped. My hope. This, the thing, the fuel that I run on in my life, what fills up my gas tank, the hope, regardless of whatever I see happening in the world, my hope, my living hope, is that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And can I tell you this? David never saw that. But he will. Guess what? You've never seen that. <laughs> but you will. <laughs> so we're living on the exact same hope that David did. Now there was a beautiful, when Christ appeared, you know, that was the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living, yes? And when he comes back, it'll really be the goodness of the Lord here in the land of the living, right where we're at. Then he closes it out. And I think that verse 14 is him speaking to his own heart. And he says to his heart, wait. <laughs> is that like the hardest instruction ever? Is that like your least favorite thing to do in the whole world? Wait. <laughs> I think <laughs> I hate it. I hate it. It's like, it's terrible. Uh, even at the grocery store, I, I hate waiting in line. <laughs> I don't know why that's such a big bugaboo for me. But as you're pushing your cart for the, uh, are you looking for the, le the smallest line? And are you like, you know, that sweet little old lady that you, you said hello to on aisle five, you're going to cut her off to get in front of her at the line checkout. <laughs> it's just, I hate waiting. But I got to tell you something. This is not waiting like we think about waiting. This is a different kind of waiting altogether. This isn't like waiting in the dentist's office for a root canal, which I may be doing next week. But anyway, this is wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart wait I say on the Lord that's like the best instruction ever and the waiting is not a passive waiting but it's an active waiting so how is it that I wait on the Lord I wait on the Lord as I'm here tonight hearing the word I'm waiting on God I want to hear from you Lord I want to know your way I'm waiting on you right now as I'm studying your scriptures. How else do we wait on the Lord? <coughs> Through our prayers. Lord, I'm bringing this situation and this other thing, and I'd like to see this, and please watch over and cover and, and, and bless and use to your glory these things, Lord. So I bring in prayer. Where else do I wait on the Lord? I wait on the Lord in worship, just like David is doing here in this psalm. He's waiting on the Lord and he's worshiping in joy and he's telling himself to praise the Lord. Where else do I wait on the Lord? I wait on the Lord in fellowship. When I'm with you guys, we're, we're talking about the, how are things going? Well, let's pray about it. Well, what's going on? Well, let's pray about that. I have fellowship. What do you think the Lord's saying? We have fellowship with one another. We share scriptures with one another. That's fellowship. And I have fellowship with the Lord himself who is my light, who is my salvation, I wait on him. And then the interesting thing happens when I wait on the Lord. Here they are. As I wait on the Lord, my courage rises up. I'm going to continue to wait on him. I believe this is right. I don't care what the world says or what the enemy throws at me. I'm going to be courageous and I'm going to continually wait on the Lord. And then my strength comes as I wait on the Lord. And as I'm waiting on him, I'm like, okay. It's like coming into a gas station and refueling. Okay, I can go. I can keep going. I can keep going. My strength is still there. God's with me. I've prayed. I've worshiped. I've heard from his word. And now I have strength. He'll strengthen your heart. And then he closes again with wait, I say, on the Lord. Isn't that a beautiful psalm? <laughs>
it's just gorgeous hang on to this one uh you know put highlight marks on it go back to it i'm telling you even if you're like well i need to read the word today and i'm not quite sure what i should read read psalm 27 it'll bless your heart and encourage you and give you strength and courage i love you guys <laughs> i want you to have a really good easter season coming up uh we have Good Friday and then Easter. I can hardly wait to celebrate those things with you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this night and thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, that we have waited upon you this night. And as we have waited, you've spoken to us, Lord. And through your word, you're teaching us your way. And you are strengthening our courage to keep following. And Lord, we want to do that. We want to follow you all the days of our life. And we will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. We pray these things in Jesus' wonderful name. And all my dear brothers and sisters say, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thanks so much for coming out.